This is a walkthrough video for this Forest River Wildwood 29 VBUD. We're gonna start up here at the front, work our way all the way around and eventually to the inside. So first thing you see here is a uh, pass-through compartment, plenty of storage. There is a uh, light over here as well as the manual cranks for the uh, uh, electric tongue jack. This blue hose you see is the quick connect for the exterior uh, water outlet. I'll show you that when we get over there. Um, it's just a quick connect fitting, just like an air hose. Just pull that collar back, it'll slip right on there. Um, right below that, this little black box you see right here is a pre-wired location for a Furion solar charging panel that can be installed on the roof. Um, on each of the four corners, you do have a stabilizer jack with the uh, yellow uh, additional stabilizing bars. To be able to take an impact or a socket, lower that down. Um, there is a little, uh, see that little T-handle on that yellow rod? Make sure that's loosened up. So that could fully extend once you get this stabilizer down snug that t-handle back up and you're all set to go all right up here on the front you do have two 12 volt batteries underneath those covers those 12 volt batteries do power um, your lights your awning your slide out so uh you always want to make sure you do keep those charged up if uh if you plug into shore power and that battery disconnect is in the on position it will charge those batteries for you so you don't have to worry about charging them individually or anything like that so when you unplug from your camping trip you will have fully charged batteries again you have to make sure that this disconnect switch right here you see is in that on position let me see if i get a better angle on it so over here you can see it has on and off uh, when you use the coach you want to make sure that's in the on position or if you're plugged in you want to make sure that's in the on position basically the only time you want to shut this off is if you are going to store this thing or you're not going to be using it for a while. All right, so your two 20 pound propane cylinders. You do have an auto uh, switch over regulator here. So what's, what that means is uh, as soon as you uh, open one tank, it'll drain that tank that you have the valve open on, and then you come over to the next tank. If you leave this valve open, it will start draining from that tank uh, automatically. Your electric tongue jack, you do have a light on the front as well as the extend and retract buttons. And then underneath this little uh, cap you see here, uh, if you'll take that off, there is a little manual crank in there. So if you're ever stuck somewhere, you don't have a charge in those 12 volt batteries. Back here for some reason, um, you're not stuck stranded. You can use that crank you see in that front compartment to raise and lower this tongue jack. Um, also on the front, you do have your seven way right here. That's for your trailer lights and your trailer brakes. Your two safety chains. And then the silver cable you see here is your uh, emergency breakaway. That breakaway is connected to a little black pin that goes inside of a black box. That's like tucked up back here, it's kind of hard to see. But uh, back in there, um, in the case of, in the event of an emergency, that'll pull that black pin out of there, which will uh, allow the trailer to start breaking uh, on its own. That way uh, it doesn't make a, a worst case scenario any worse. If you ever forget and you accidentally pull that pin out of there, not a big deal, it's not a one-time use. You put that pin right back in there and keep on trucking. Your uh, propane cover here on the bottom does have two little uh, tabs here that you can bungee strap in place. That way you don't accidentally lose this cover for any reason. As well as this little trap door on top. So when that's uh, on top here, you can just access that without having to fully pull that whole cover off of there. On the left side here, you do have your manufacturer tags. I'll let you know the uh, month and year it was made, all your weight ratings, your tire inflation information, all those goodies are located right here on this tag. This is just access to that pass-through compartment. Now in front of the rear, or in front of the axles here, you do have your sewage outlet. So that uh, cap you see on the end there, just a quarter turn fitting, locks in those ears. So take that off. Uh, make sure you have all the valves closed before you remove that cap. Make sure you have your sewage hose locked in place and put in to the uh, sewer before you pull any of those handles. Um, black tank is going to be the first handle you see there on the left hand side. And then you have your uh, two gray tanks. One's a gray tank number one. One's going to be called the galley tank. Uh, the, the first gray tank is going to be for the bathroom, basically for your shower. And then the other one's going to be for a kitchen sink. Um, I always recommend dumping the black tank first 
and then following it up with both gray tanks kind of helps clean out that hose keep everything nice and clean here on the back you do have this uh access door which allows for easy access for storage inside this rear bunk area we'll get to more of that when we get in the inside and then over here you do have your 50 amp shore cord um, this little cover just pops up you have this little retaining ring on here so you can twist and lock that in place so you don't actually pull that out of there uh, it does come with this shore cord that will be your shore cord on the back here um, these two things you see right here these are for uh, a park cable or a remote satellite if you have that set up um, you'll hook it here basically it's going to act as a splitter allowing any of the other coax fittings in there to uh, display that cable or that satellite you have hooked up uh, right next to it is your city water connection there's gonna be two different ways you can use water in this uh, you can either fill your onboard fresh tank on the right side of the, the coach well i'll show you that when we get there or you can hook directly uh, take that uh, clean water hose hook directly here bypass that tank and your water pump and just use the pressure from that water uh, through the city connection here and then next to that is your black tank flush um, same kind of deal as the city water connection you'll hook that uh, clean water hose up to this but make sure you do have your sewage outlet hooked up that black tank valve open over there in front of the axles before you hook any water to this as soon as you hook water to this it will start filling that black tank so just make sure you do have that open because you don't want to backfill that black tank um, all this does is just kind of sprays that clean water in there keeps that tank as clean as possible to keep any odors down you do have a full-size spare that can go on any of the four hubs that little black box you see between the marker lights up there that's a pre-wire location for a Furion backup camera in case you want to install one later on down the road. All right, over here, you do have your water heater. So uh, the water heater here, uh, this is your anode rod slash drain plug. Uh, this is a used unit, so this is slightly used. Um, it still has some life left in it, but once it starts to deteriorate anymore, I would recommend replacing this. Um, but to use this, you'll just put this in here. You will have to take a socket, uh, inch and a uh, sixteenth, I believe, to uh, snug that up. Uh, and then you'll be able to put water to this. I always recommend uh, putting water in it before you uh, turn it on, either gas or electric side. You don't want to damage anything without any water in it. So make sure you do fill this thing with water. Um, to do that, all you have to do is make sure you put this plug in here and either hook the city water or fill that fresh tank, turn your water pump on. And then the first thing that's going to do is fill this tank. So it's kind of... Uh, foolproof but just always want to make sure you are conscious that you do have water in this before you turn it on so this is a gas or electric so uh, uh, on the inside you have a switch uh, that switch will control the gas side and if you want to use the electric you'll come out here and you'll turn that electric element on um, it's always going to heat a little bit faster on gas than it will electric but if you're plugged in you do have an unlimited supply of electricity as uh, opposed to the limited supply of propane in those front tanks up front uh, before you ever remove that drain plug, once you do have water in this, this little valve up here is a pressure relief valve. So just pull that valve until all the pressure is relieved from the tank. You can even leave it in the upright position, pull that plug, come back here, push that down, let that tank fully drain. Um, if you ever do turn this on without water in it, it does have a thermal cutoff. It will hit this, trip these two buttons up here. Um, best case scenario, you'll be able to just uh, reset them. No, uh, no uh, damage done or anything like that. Um, so just again make sure you always have water in this thing before you turn it on and then last but not least this little port you see here is the exhaust port so when this is closed oopsies i'll have to make sure you get that put back on there for you <laughs> it must have been a little loose but uh the uh exhaust will come out of this so uh make sure you do you are aware of that it's not going to burn nothing down but it will melt something if it's up against that all right, you have your uh, two exterior speakers that are lit up blue right now. Um, underneath this cover is a 120 volt GFI protected outlet. The silver vent you see right here is the exhaust for the furnace. So when that furnace is running, again, uh, the gas coming out of there will be kind of warm. So make sure you don't have nothing stacked in front of it. Um, this right here is where you're gonna fill your fresh tank. Little quarter turn fitting, you'll stick that 
clean drinking water hose in there. Fill that up till the tank reader on the inside says it's full. Um, this right here is that spray port for that blue hose in the front compartment. Again, it's just a little quarter turn fitting to lock that in place. The vent you see right here, that is uh, the exhaust vent for the hood over the uh, cooktop. And then right here, you do have your little uh, exterior kitchen area with the uh, gas grill and then the 120 volt mini refrigerator. There's temperature control in that mini refrigerator. And then there is a quick connect uh, gas line for this stove here. So this will uh, snap in the back over here. Quick connect on that. And then you'll come down underneath here and you can move this door out of the way. It will uh, quick connect in there. If you see that little uh, uh, valve right there, you want to make sure you open that once you have that gas hooked up to it so you can uh, use that grill. All right, you do have the LCI solid steps on this. One thing to keep in mind is that there is a decent amount of clearance here, but just in case, you always wanna make sure that the steps, uh, this kick panel on the steps here is as flush as it can be with the uh, threshold of the door. That way you don't run into any issues with the top of the steps here hitting the bottom of your door. Um, you can adjust those steps. Well, you see the holes in here, those are all adjustment holes. This little pin, you'll push that pin that you see right here. You'll pick the step up, pull that pin out of there, slide the feet in and out wherever you'd like them. Push that pin back in and you're all set. Uh, to close these steps, you'll just pick them up. And then they do have these little ears on both sides. You'll pull this yellow handle. Make sure those are pushed all the way back and locked in place, which locks those steps in place just like that. And then the same thing to bring them down. Make sure you do keep a hand on these. There is no gas shock or assisted spring. So make sure you do keep a hand on those so you don't let them slam. Alrighty, let's move to the inside. All right, so first thing you see on the inside here is gonna be your uh, control panel. So on the top here is your tank readouts. So batteries, as we are plugged in, it's gonna show full. Then you have your fresh tank, your black tank, your gray tank, and then your uh, galley tank. The galley tank, again, is gonna be for the kitchen sink, gray tank for the bathroom. You have your water pump switch, your water heater switch. Again, that water heater switch in here will control just the gas. If you wanna run it on electric, you will have to flip that switch on the outside. And then the two lights, um, interior and exterior lights, as well as slide out controls and awning control. So uh, since this thing is closed up, we're gonna hit that awning or the awning the slide out button and bring this thing out. You hear that noise right there. That noise is just the motor amping out, letting you know that the side is fully extended. All right. So over here in the kitchen area, you do have the kitchen sink with the little uh, roll up uh, sink cover here. Uh, the blinds over the kitchen are just regular drawstring blinds uh, as for, they're just for a, a fire safety thing. Um, so those are gonna function just as normally. Pull the string will allow them to come down and they do have the shutter rod over there on the other side. Uh, microwave here, that's gonna be pretty standard. Um, nothing real crazy with that. That's have the rotating tray on the inside. The uh, exhaust fan and light for the cooktopper right here. Uh, this little glass cover just flips up. It's just held in place with these little rubber ears that you see, you can see those little rubber ears right there. Those just push in place there. But this folds up once and then one more time, allowing access to the three burners on top. Um, there is a decorative blue LED lighting on the stove. Um, 
Each burner, as well as the pilot inside the oven down there, uh, is controlled uh, or does have a spark igniter. This handle on the left here is a spark igniter. It only turns one direction uh, clockwise. Um, all you'll do to light a burner, you'll put it over to the high location, spin this, and that will ignite the designated burner. Um, same thing for the pilot. The pilot, you might have to turn that igniter a couple times just so that it plums that gas um, down inside there. It may take a minute, but it will fire. Um, the black vent you see right below that is the air intake for your furnace. So just make sure you don't block that if you are going to run the furnace. I'm going to want that furnace to overwork itself. You do have the uh, Everchill refrigerator here with this little travel lock. That's in a locked position. And then that's the unlocked position, allowing access to the freezer up here with the temperature control. As well as the refrigerator down here with its own temperature control as well. Nice large uh, pantry storage area here. Um, any light you see that doesn't have a light switch will have a little button in the middle. You'll just click that button that will turn the light on. All right, so this right here is your thermostat for the uh, front AC or the furnace. Um, it's kind of hard to see. I don't know why the camera doesn't want to pick it up too well. All right, there we go. So one touch is going to wake up the screen. Um, and then pushing the button down here will change all the settings so that you can uh, control either the heat or the AC. I'm going to push through that and make sure we leave that off. All right, and then these do control the temperature right here. Again, that's for the uh, front AC as well as the furnace. This little black box you see down here, this is your LP detector slash uh, carbon monoxide detector. Now uh, that will run uh, constantly off your 12 volt battery in the front. So if you do let this thing sit without being plugged in and that disconnect is in the on position, uh, this right here will drain that battery eventually. If you do have a low voltage in that 12 volt battery, this uh, device right here will chirp, uh, letting you know you do have low voltage so it is struggling to monitor the air. Um, as soon as you charge that battery up, it'll stop chirping, and then you're all set. All right, in the bunkhouse area here, you do have the uh, uh, bunks that do fold up, as well as this couch that does fold up. Um, before I show you all that, we'll go right over here. Um, this little black box you see right here, this is your uh, breaker box slash fuse panel. Inside here are all your fuses and breakers. There is a little fan in here that will kick on from time to time, so don't be alarmed if you do hear that thing running. That's all perfectly normal. All right, so uh, it's pretty neat on each one of these. They do have instructions, like this is the last bunk down, the first bunk up, and then this one's uh, the exact opposite. So uh, we'll pull this down. Let that mattress come down with it. That's one sleeping area there. Same thing over here. We'll pull that down and grab that mattress and let that down just like that. The couch over here does just uh, fold down, folds all the way down. You see these little uh, grommets here. Those do sit on the floor and then you can adjust that mattress you see right there accordingly. You do have a dual USB charging outlet right here. That way you can kind of skip that little power brick into the wall, plug the charger directly into that. Um, okay, so the rear AC has controls right here on the bottom. Um, it does have the option for a heat pump. This does not currently have a heat pump, but if you'd like to install one of those on the road, that is always an option. Um, one thing about these ACs, uh, same thing for both ACs. Um, well, actually, I'm sorry, the rear AC it's gonna be a little bit different. Um, you do have the ability to open and close the vents with this knob right here. And then you do have the filters on each side, so make sure you keep those filters clean. Um, but the AC here on the front um, has these little trap doors. So these little doors, if you open them and that AC is on, it's gonna take that cool air from the AC, dump it directly out of this these two vents you see here. If you have the AC on, you have these little doors closed. It's gonna plumb that air through all these white vents you see in the ceiling. Now these vents do close and they do rotate uh, 365 degrees or 360 degrees 
Um, so you can adjust the airflow that way. Um, I do recommend leaving those little trap doors closed on there. That way the front of the, the, uh, the unit, the front bathroom and the bedroom up there uh, stay cold as well as the back, everything back here. Um, you do have an area to mount a TV back here if you'd like. You do have that coax hook up here so you can use the antenna or that part cable uh, if you do have that hooked up. Your dinette, uh, this does fold down into a sleeping area. Uh, you'll simply pull this table up, uh, up out of the way here. These legs just pull right up, kind of rearrange all that, and that will fold down into a sleeping area. Um, you do have some storage underneath uh, each of the, the legs of the dinette here, as well as the uh, couch that does fold down again into another sleeping area. You'll just pull up on the front of this couch and it will fold that down. Now you do have some storage underneath there, as well as that little access door there so you can access that without picking up uh, the slide out. Um, all the rest of the curtains besides those ones over the kitchen um, are just going to be tension. So you'll pull them down, select the height, and leave them. And then they are assisted up. So you'll pull them down again, unlock them, and let that go all the way back up. All right. You do have an electric uh, heat graystone fireplace here. All the controls for that are on the right side. Um, you do have some different settings here, different flame settings, as well as color settings and temperature settings as well as a timer um, above that you do have your uh furion uh soundbar radio here two different zones control the speakers on the inside or the exterior and then uh up underneath here you do have your uh antenna booster so that little green light you see on that is the booster is turned on um that's just going to boost that signal allowing for uh, better reception if you do ever hook a TV up in here. Um, and then you do have a uh, mount already mounted here. All you have to do is mount your TV if you'd like to do that. The front bedroom here, or front bedroom, front bathroom, I'm sorry. Uh, you do have the full-size shower. Uh, toilet, toilet does have a foot pedal to flush. It's on the right-hand side there. Um, with some different storage uh, behind the medicine cabinet. Um, for the shower here, these are glass doors, so make sure you do always have this little rubber strap holding those in place. But you do have the skylight inside the shower, and then right above the toilet, you do have this exhaust vent or uh, cool air vent. You can just open that up with the exhaust fan. You do have a switch right there for the exhaust fan. Turn that fan on. And then you do have some more storage uh, right in here. All right, uh, last but not least is the front bedroom. So there's some storage at the front there. Um, the front bed does pick up. You can access the front compartment if you need to. Again, some more storage. And then uh, in each of these cabinets, you will have a uh, hanger rod there so you can hang clothes if you need, as well as some more storage above. Um, dual USB charging ports on each side of the bed. And then you do have another TV mount location right here. That way you can install a TV in this bedroom. And then last but not least, you do have another uh, storage cabinet right here. You can use as a closet or as another pantry. Alrighty. That will conclude this walkthrough on this Wildwood.